Did you know that I am Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, and in this video I'm going to be looking at specifically three weapons from Yakuza Kiwami 2 and the original Yakuza 2. So in Kiwami 2 there's a segment where you have to raid a castle that is decorated in a way to make it feel a bit more historical, complete with samurai dudes that have spears and flintlock rifles or some ninjas and whatever else. During this long battle there's a small section where you're in a room surrounded by a bunch of dudes with old rifles with a conveniently placed Gatling gun right in front of you. Like Dragon Ishin players will notice that it is the exact same sort of guns that show up from time to time in that game. Whether or not it's the same model as well, I'm not sure, but it probably is. However, in the original Yakuza 2, despite all of the aesthetics of everything in this castle being the exact same as Kiwami 2, the room with the Gatling gun instead has a Browning M2, a pretty historic machine gun that was quite notably used in World War 2. But why it's here in this much older timepiece of the castle is a bit odd. Maybe you could argue that it's used by the enemies of Japan is symbolic in how it's used here in the game, but I highly doubt it. But then a bit earlier in the game, there's a flashback scene where Kazuma is shooting some Korean dudes. Within this scene, we have Karawa in both the original and Kiwami 2 versions just having an accurate revolver that Japanese cops have. Kazuma has a sort of legally different 1911, and this Korean guy has a weird sort of legally different Makarov, or Makarov if you're a COD fan. This weird Makarov thingy is just the standard pistol that they tend to give NPCs in a lot of the Yakuza games, same with what Kazuma and Karawa all have. However, in the original, rather than the Makarov, it was a TT-33, or perhaps more likely a Type 54, which is essentially a Chinese knockoff version of the Russian TT-33. Kazuma, on the other hand, quite bizarrely just has a Luger, a German pistol used in the World Wars, and it's a longer barreled carbine variant of it. It is definitely something that you wouldn't expect to see in the hands of a ruthless Japanese hitman. If you'd like to take a dive into more of the guns represented in the Yakuza franchise, you can check the pages of the different games on IMFDB, a website that I forgot existed while I was typing up this script until like halfway through unfortunately. Anyway, I'd like to say that this is the Luger by the way, which isn't to be confused with a similarly popular German World War pistol, the Mauser, which you might recognize if you're a Resident Evil 4 fan. Speaking of which, Leon Kennedy in Japanese is voiced by Toshiyuki Morikawa, who's very famous for characters like Sephiroth, Dante, Yoshikage Kira, and easily his most famous role ever of all time, Tatsuo Shinada. Did you know that in the beginning of Shinada's section in Yakuza 5, unlike the other characters or other games where you might start with a few thousand yen, Shinada starts with specifically 217 yen. You can't spend or earn any money during this first little tutorial bit of his section, so for a while you will have 217 yen on you. This is rather cleverly shown in a cutscene when Shinada empties his wallet and shows in his hand exactly 217 yen, which you can tell from the two 100 yen coins, the 10, the 5, and the two ones. In the Dragon Engine games, so Yakuza 6 and onwards, a fun little feature they added was the ability to smash various environmental objects like chairs, signs, and bikes, as well as the ability to destroy big glass windows and some of the businesses that you can interact with. But have you ever realized exactly which buildings you can and can't vandalize? It isn't just a select few shops just randomly picked, but instead it's all of the businesses that don't exist in real life. So that's why things like Popo, Smile Burger, or Wild Jackson have breakable objects within them and can be broken into during combat. A perfect example of this being the case is that all of the Dragon Engine games before Lost Judgment had the fake default place of a Kaoshimaru. However, Lost Judgment then replaced all of the locations with the real brand of Yoshinoya. So that means that the previously destructible chairs and windows are now completely indestructible. Furthermore, you can't step inside the business when in combat, and if an enemy is aggroed on you and you step inside, they'll suddenly decide that they don't want to fight you anymore. So I guess that means if you want a super easy way to know what businesses are real and what aren't, try committing crimes and breaking shit. Here's another thing related to those real businesses, although I will admit that this is just a completely random thing that I wanted to mention, so I'll briefly discuss it. In Yakuza 5 at the Gindako Highball Tavern, one of the drink options is a Coke Highball. A bit bizarre considering Coke is nowhere else in the game, and that they have a big ass Pepsi sign in the game, so I figured that maybe this was a mistranslation of Kora, which is often what people in Japan just say when they're referring to Coke. So I went and checked the Japanese version, and no, it's still Coke here too. That's all there is to it, there's just Coke here. I don't know where else has Coke, but yeah. Another thing in Yakuza 5 that's a bit more common knowledge is that there's a cutscene in the game for when Kiryu goes to fight a thousand Heartless, but before he does, the cutscene shows that there are a bunch of people there that are on his side, 
but they don't do anything. Within this crowd, there are a few NPCs with some bizarre looking outfits. One of these outfits is on a few NPCs being quite clearly Kaitos from Judgment and Lost Judgment. But also one of them is just in Kiryu's outfit, which is a bit copycatish, bro, come on. It does make me wonder though if they grabbed one of these guys to act as a placeholder model for Kaito when they were making Judgment and liked the look so much that they kept the outfit on him, but that is purely speculation. But as we're all aware, Kaito's most iconic feature is obviously his super cool and sexy shirt. But did you know that Crispin Freeman, the English voice actor for Kaito in both of his games, has a very similar shirt to the man? He wore this shirt in a little behind the scenes video for Judgment, but the most important thing to take away from this fact is that he literally just wore this shirt on the day, and the fact that he wore it when they recorded a behind the scenes thing was just a coincidence. This man is truly Kaito in real life. And now the next few facts will actually be related to the English dubs of Yakuza Like a Dragon and Lost Ch Get your hands away from the dislike button! Did you know that Soma from Lost Judgment originally had a different voice actor? Now, typically during the casting process and early stages of many things, actors will likely be swapped around here and there without any of us knowing at all. But with Soma, you can actually hear a short clip of his original actor in the announcement trailer for Lost Judgment. This actor ended up getting replaced by Ayabe from Judgment's actor, Matt Yang King. Firstly, here's the current Soma. Slap them around, but you do need to keep them conscious enough to keep the fear alive. Then, here's the original actor. Slap them around, but you do need to keep them conscious. Enough to keep the fear alive. I have no idea who the original actor was, but I can definitely say that Matt Yang King was a way better choice. On the topic of casting, when looking for actors for Lost Judgment, Greg Chun, the voice of Yagami in Judgment and Lost Judgment, as well as Namba in Like a Dragon, was asked a very simple question by the casting team. Hey Greg, who is your voiceover nemesis? And without hesitation, Greg immediately responded with Todd Habakorn, who as you may know, voiced Kuana in Lost Judgment. If I run now, who's gonna pay for Tsukumo's window then? Huh? Uh. For fuck's sake, I'll just pay for it. I'm not sure how much influence this answer from Greg affected the casting choice of Kuana, but I dare say it got the ball rolling. And before I move away from Lost Judgment, did you know that in the game files there exists an old logo for the game? Judgment in Japan was known as Judge Eyes, however Lost Judgment had the same name in Japan as it did in the West. This was more or less because the Japanese team just thought that it was a cooler name, but the old logo mentioned was for Judge Eyes 2. It's nothing crazy, being just the Judge Eyes logo with a stylized 2 drawn on it, and while it might be unlikely that Judge Eyes 2 was going to be what the game was actually called in Japan, it's at least interesting to see that they left this logo in the files. Now then, in Yakuza Like a Dragon, there was quite an iconic sub-story involving a foreigner asking for directions to a train station. In Japanese, he speaks fluent English, while Ichiban responds in very confused Japanese. However, in English, they both speak English which is definitely not as funny, but at the very least, the English team made a small request to have Ichiban recognize the irony by looking at the camera. But anyway, many people do know that, but it shows that clearly the Japanese team actually read the English team's emails, and so the English team were able to make some slight changes to some scenes to better fit the English dub. One such example of this is during a scene towards the beginning of the game where Ichiban and Arakawa walk and talk. It's such an insanely minor difference, so you may never notice it in your entire life, but during this scene, because George Takei is a bit of an old bloke, he always talks much slower than the Japanese actor for Arakawa. Keiji Tang managed just fine, but because of George Takei's slower speech, the English team had to ask the Japanese team for a few adjustments within the scene. In total, the scene is only like 10 seconds longer, but sometimes when the camera cuts, Arakawa and Ichiban might be placed slightly further back in the road in English compared to Japanese, or sometimes the camera might orbit slightly faster in the Japanese version than it does in the English. Now, I want to show these differences off as much as possible, and I'm not editing it yet, so I'm just going to keep talking and we'll cut myself off once I've fully shown it in the edit, which of course I don't know if it's happened yet or not because I'm not editing it yet. So, uh, yeah, w what'd you get up to on the weekend? Anything exciting? This video will probably come out on Monday, so hopefully you don't have a, you know, tough week ahead of you. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know what I'll be doing on the weekend that this comes out, like I'm recording this in advance. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's alright. Um, Anyway, I'm not sure if there are any other instances of this happening, considering it's all incredibly small, but it really goes to show why there are times in speedruns of games where one dub might be faster than the other. A quick little fun fact about the English dub of Like a Dragon again. Did you know that Brian Bloom, who voices Sawashiro, was one of the writers for the campaigns for Modern Warfare 2019 and 2022? 
Yep, that, yep. Now here's the final dub related fact that's not necessarily a fact and is more of a funny little goofy thing. It's to do with Ichiban and the common joke that the community makes that he has schizophrenia. Obviously this joke came from the premise of Ichiban's gamer brain taking over whenever he gets into fights, causing him to see the wacky enemies that the game has. However, there is an instance of him sounding a bit cooked, which is exclusive to the English dub. In Japan, as you may know, they'll say the phrase, Itadakimasu! before they eat food. Now in English, we don't really have anything similar besides maybe something along the lines of, oh, this looks good as I. So the English team instead replaced this with Kasuga asking the party, who's hungry? To which they respond collectively with, me, me. me. Pretty cute way to go about it. It makes you sort of think that Ichiban is bringing food over to everyone from the counter, you know? However, in the prologue of the game where Ichiban is all alone, you can actually eat at a restaurant. In Japanese, Ichiban talking to himself before he eats is completely acceptable over there. But in English, well, he's kind of talking to himself. Who's hungry? Now then, over the many years of the franchise, the series has encompassed the talents of many different composers. These people have lots of fun facts about them, but to tell you a random interesting thing, did you know that one of the guys responsible for the song Snake Eater from Metal Gear Solid 3, Norihiko Hibino, also composed various songs for Yakuza 2? You can learn stuff like that and many more little things in a long series I did, so feel free to watch some of those videos, you know, after this one. Now before I end, if you enjoyed this video, please consider, you know, you, you, know, you can click this. <laughs> Just come on. Just, you know, click the button. Anyway, I know a lot of you might be wondering what my sources were for a lot of the information presented in this video. In all honesty, I actually have one of the most reliable sources in the world. He's an inside man within the Sega headquarters, who I'm sure many of you will all know. And that's because Masayoshi Yokoyama himself acted as my source, and he told me some more exclusive details for the upcoming Like a Dragon Gaiden. He said that the game will feature both Kiryu and Majima, and the two of them will perform a six hour long gay sex